Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 12, Thoughts. This episode is called Seeds, another episode I love. And spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything in the MCU that's after this episode in this video. Before I dive in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And yeah, so we start the episode near the pool, and one of the characters is played by Dylan Minette, or Clay Cray. And something weird happens to the water. Yes, it's ice. And yeah, it really did look like the the leg would just holy crap. Like I I was, you know, considering some of the brutal stuff that's happened on this show so far, I was thinking are they actually going to like is this guy going to lose his leg to the just yeah. And yeah, we learned that Fitzsimmons together invented the the thing that was used for the ice and there's a bit of a rivalry between operations and sci-tech which you know throughout the episode there's little you know every so often an ops or sci-tech person will make a disparaging remark about the other Bucky Barnes is on the wall of the lost which I can't help but think there might be a reason for th that character getting brought back up. And yeah, they talk about how potential can be a boon or a bane. Poor Donnie. He freezes up in front of other people. We've all been there. And they play a female version of the Wilhelm Scream, a very stock scream sound effect, and I'm here for it. And yeah, Ian Quinn is behind it. Very cool to see him again. And say it with Ward, we're conducting our own investigation. Yeah, because of course you are, because this is American piece of media. You never trust anybody else to do a proper investigation. And... Yeah, we see Fitz uh, really admire Donnie's potential. And <laughs> Melinda May is trying to talk to Phil, but Phil is not saying anything, so Melinda talks more than she's ever done. <laughs> and it is nice that he does at least believe that she's not, uh, you know, lying. And then she tries to tell him that she's been having sex with Ward, and he interrupts. And, you know, later on he does say, I heard. I trust you. If it goes bad, you'll end it. And very cool fight between Melinda May and Agent Lumley. And, yeah, you know, once you realize, yeah, dude thought that these were the people who were who've been killing agents he didn't realize they were shield very cool to see christine adams in something um so yeah uh she was in batman begins tron legacy and the girl with the dragon tattoo the american girl with the dragon tattoo not the swedish girl who spoke swedish but the american girl who spoke American with a very awkward Swedish accent, as everyone in that movie did. And yeah, I appreciate Phil catching up to, to Lumley. By the way, Carl Lumley, yeah, he's amazing on Alias. It's, you know, I appreciate that tip of the hat. They could have named this character anything. You know, there's like it's one letter away from the actual Carl Lumley's name. And, yeah, you know, Phil catches up to him using Lola Flying. We get some backstory of how they've been struggling to hide Sky since she was a baby. And 
Fitz helps Donnie with the, the battery. And, you know, around this point in the, the episode, you know, wondering, is Donnie, like, suicidal? Is Callie the killer? And, yeah, Callie reveals, you know, Seth and Donnie have been talking to each other about, uh, you know, looking forward for weeks to, to Fitzsimmons showing up, even though the only, you know, that, yeah, that would mean they knew that Fitzsimmons would respond to the, the ice machine and that Donnie and Seth set it up. I, I did think, you know, it did seem completely credible that Callie would be one of them because she kept, you know, we saw her in the opening scene. She kept postponing, you know, she kept saying, oh, I don't want to get into the water. You know, it is the, the kind of thing where you wonder, does she know something about that water that, you know, and, yeah, I, I thought they did a really great job. You know, obviously Donnie put it there, and Callie was actually, like, worried. Let's see, they, I think they were worried about getting caught swimming in the pool and maybe, like, some kind of disciplinary action or something. Yeah, you know, if she's really worried about, you know, oh, she really wants to go to the sandbox, she can't get caught by administration, you know, makes sense. And, you know, you could also believe that Callie, you know, until it's made clear that that wasn't the case, yeah, it, it seems logical that she would be, you know, willing to maybe kill off Donnie so she would get back the top spot at the sandbox. Which I feel like both of them are a little too old to still squabble over, like, sandbox... But then Sandbox Love never dies, so. And, yeah, we realize it was bad that Fitz helped Donnie with the, the battery. And Seth shoots Fitz. Can I talk for a sec? Just two seconds. Okay, the length of this conversation is doubling at an alarming rate. And Quinn tricks the the duo into testing it even though he has no intention of showing up to to you know he's just gonna leave them there just yeah he's he's such a bastard and yeah Colson tells Sky about what he learned I love the decision to do it without like the audio of the words being said and and like just focus on like Chloe Bennett really does a phenomenal job really she has been from the start of the show just you know just focus on her because we know the information we don't need to hear it again the important thing is how it affects her it was the exact right decision you know writing and directing wise and, yeah, so Seth and Donnie try to work the machine. It worked. Oh, hell no. And they start a superstorm. I don't know who was working on this episode, is a big fan of Red Alert 2, but I see you. They created the weather control device, and I'm here for it. And the effects were actually quite good, like... A lot of the time, they try to keep it, you know, minimal. Like, it's, you know, like, they set up some fans off camera, and every so often, like, some some hail thing drops. You know, those are very, very easy to, to rig up. Not extremely budget-intensive. They do some stuff with lighting, and then they, like, animate the, the clouds. But I don't think they ever push it too far. It never like, stops looking convincing, and legitimately epic shot of Melinda May navigating the bus into the eye of the storm and, and getting them out. Like, that was very, you know, especially that one shot where you see just the massive clouds and the plane moving, you know, just, yeah, very nicely done, and clouds are not super easy to animate you know, possibly more so than than even women, if you know, you know, and the, the, yeah, 
because because like we know how these things move you know we know how, what air moves like so it's it's very difficult to to you know you you can't just say oh well it's alien technology who knows exactly how it would move you know but yeah it's it's very very convincing and i i think it's the fact that there are just few enough of the the really like big effect shots is how they were able to do it on budget you know the the because if you actually, if you go through the episode, there's not a huge amount of screen time where you can very clearly make out the, the you know, a lot of the time, it's kind of out of focus behind characters who are talking about it, you know, and for there, yeah, you get to cheat. It's, it's out of focus. You don't have to make it look incredible anymore, so just, yeah. And Seth goes into cardiac arrest and ends up dying. They are going to send Donnie to the sandbox, but to keep an eye on him. So here's hoping he's one of those people who just needs a lock on the door. It doesn't really matter if it's inside or out. I don't know if anyone in my audience is actually going to know what that's a reference to. Some of these are more for my own benefit. And yeah, Melanime and Colson talk. And we learn, you know, Sky completely accepted the, you know, and, and focuses on the good. And I will say that is something that a lot of young people are able to do, although I don't know if it's also maybe trying to say, you know, okay, so we know we ruined the world, you gotta live in it, you know, make the most of it. And, yeah, you know, we, so in, in this episode we learn that S.H.I.E.L.D. has been protecting sky since she was a baby so maybe we should all trust the government that you know when they do something that looks really awful they're maybe they're just protecting a helpless baby you know, just I, I mean they're not even really being subtle anymore about this government propaganda and we see that donnie has ice powers which i mean they don't have access to the the x-men at this point the the you know Mar marvel studios do not so yeah you know the fact that that yeah donnie can't possibly secretly be bobby drake but yeah and yeah quinn has uh, you know i it, it was pretty cool Considering how much we hate Quinn by now, you know, when Coulson says, you know, as soon as your plane is over, uh, a nation allied with S.H.I.E.L.D. will blow you out of the sky. So it's a courtesy call. I have a message for you from the clairvoyant who, you know, we, we don't, we haven't met clairvoyant yet. Maybe she's related, related to Claire de Lune. Who, based on her name, I am guessing a crazy person. So the oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, um, in the comics, Donnie is Blizzard. So that's the yeah. Um, and let's. See. Yeah, I believe that's everything I have for this episode. I think they did a good job. Uh, right, I appreciate at the very start of the episode, we see what this thing can do on a small scale. We see it freeze over a pool in a matter of seconds. And, you know, by the end of the episode, it's been upgraded, and it's creating this massive storm. And it is also, like, I did legitimately think, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna freeze something big. But no, they, they seeded the skies for, for a superstar. You know, that's very clever. I, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. But it is a logical, you know, it's not like, how did that happen? Kind of, you know, like, let's say if by the end of the episode, Ward could teleport at will, then I'd be like, where did that come from? But no, it's, you know, we've all learned in, in you know, like, 
middle school or high school, we learn, you know, storms are when there's, you know, this, this, you know, you need both hot and cold air for that kind of thing to happen, and it was hot before, they supplied the cold, yeah, it was, it was a clever, you know, I, I don't think it would have been as interesting if the episode ended with, like, people having to, to dodge ice blasts or something, you know, we've already seen that, but with fire with Scorch, so, you know, and the, I think that might be, right, uh, I, you know, it's, it's very American to make an anti-peer pressure story in a piece of media, but I, I thought it worked, you know, Seth felt like he would have, he would be able to have that impact on Donnie, and... And it does really show, like, both Donnie and Seth really did risk, like, it could easily have gone badly. Uh, you know, Seth could have lost a leg and, you know, possibly even died. And Donnie as well, you know. I think that might be about all I have. Right, the, the ice effects were also very, very convincing, and that's another thing, like, we've never seen ice move that fast in real life, but we've all seen ice, we know what it looks like, it's, it's very difficult to fool the audience if it's not convincing, it's gonna, you know, um, they, they did not harvest their ice in the Uncanny Valley, is what I'm saying, and that, I think covers everything um yeah I, I did quite enjoy the the cracks between like ops and scitech with uh, you know so agent ward is scitech everything you thought it would be and he says something like there's no there's no rope course there's no muscle mu no defined muscle something like that and then Fitz says, no double-digit IQ. <laughs> Ouch. Holy crap. Shots fired. <laughs> but yeah, the, the you know, that's always going to be the, the thing between, you know, those, those types of, of people. The, the, you know, people who are extremely smart, you know, make jokes about how other people are unintelligent and, you know, people who are fit, you know, make cracks about other people not being fit. So, yeah. I think that might... I like the, the couple of jokes they crack during the, the talk with the the speech in front of all the sci tech people and i yeah i i like that like for a for a few seconds you know it is like wait is is donnie going to confess because they're they're saying they're talking about you know you have to be careful with potential you know it could be catastrophic it could hurt a lot of people and you see him like you know moving and he starts saying oh god you know like oh is he gonna say i i'm so sorry i'm the one behind this but then the freezing starts you know so yeah that was very nicely done oh, right i like the detail that you know in order to fight the cold he needs glucose to get his system going yeah um it, it, some, somehow, the, the comic book science just, you know, I love how comic booky it gets sometimes, but sometimes it is nice when it's tempered with real science, because, like, yeah, you know, if you get someone, you know, I, I yeah, the, the, if someone has been 
freezing has has received a lot of cold you need to heat their body up and I think that might cover I, I, right I you know episodes like you know shows like this an episode needs to have twists I felt it was convincing that Lumley you know when he runs away from Melinda May, we think, oh, he is trying to avoid S.H.I.E.L.D. He is hiding from S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, and, and, uh, actually, wait, I guess he's sort of, no, no, because when he learns they are S.H.I.E.L.D., he gives himself up. Uh, yeah, you know, he, he actually did think that they were the, the, uh, what's the word? He thought that they were the people who'd been trying to to kill him and the other agents involved in hiding sky you know the the yeah it's like just the fact that we didn't know until he realizes their shield that's only then do we realize oh he yeah, he isn't trying to fight shield you know, basically, he thought that Shield couldn't. Yeah, he he couldn't just go to a Shield agent because he might get caught and killed before. You know, so yeah. And and yeah, really, you know, the the detail about oh yeah, like a zero eight four and you know, so yeah. In the earlier episode, they said you know a zero eight four means we don't know what it means. You know, it's an object of unknown origin like you sky and now we learn no literally she was a 084 and and the thing with you know we're if if the baby had abilities we couldn't tell but she you know she was covered in blood but not like not her own kind of thing you know that was yeah quite the image and and you know the reason she was you know moved between foster families wasn't that nobody wanted her it's that the you know it was done for her protection and I think that is everything so the next episode I will cover maybe tomorrow we'll we'll see Otherwise, it will be the day after tomorrow, which is somewhat appropriate considering there's freezing in that movie just like there is in this. And yeah, until then, try not to freeze in the pool. <laughs>